Release dates for the next big updates for Microsoft Flight Simulator have been revealed in the latest roadmap. We also have a bunch of information on the recent patch released just yesterday. Elsewhere, Aerosoft have revealed the price and release dates for their upcoming new plane, the Twin Otter. The latest roadmap then reveals the currently planned release dates for World Update 7. This is set to be released on the 31st of January, which has moved a little bit from the previous window of the 25th. The next World Update will focus on Australia, and will be bringing new terrain detail upgrades and some new photogrammetry cities as well. Also, we can expect to see a whole bunch of new points of interest. Further, if it follows the same pattern as previous World Updates, we can expect to see some new bush trips, as well as a new landing challenge added as well. Australia represents the first time Microsoft have released a World Update for the Southern Hemisphere. Up to this point, all World Updates have been focused on the Northern Hemisphere, which so far have included the USA, Japan, UK, Germany, France, Austria, the Nordics, as well as a few other locations. Now, Microsoft have previously said that eventually they will be turning their focus to include the Southern Hemisphere, so hopefully Australia will be the start of it and things won't end there. And interestingly, on that note, New Zealand will not be included in World Update 7. There were some hints dropped though in a recent live stream from Microsoft, that, well, which has in turn led to some speculation that New Zealand will instead be a focus for a future update, an entire self-contained one perhaps. In terms of what can be expected from other world updates in 2022, the feedback snapshot shows that Brazil is also planned for this year. Brazil, of course, for the most part, is indeed in the Southern Hemisphere. Turning our attention back to the Northern Hemisphere, an update for Italy looks like it might be planned for this year. Also, if we were to speculate, it seems quite possible that an update for South Korea may also make an appearance as well. To be perfectly fair though, this is pure speculation, and it's based upon the fact that the feedback snapshot indicates that South Korean subtitles are planned for the third quarter of 2022, so uh, South Korean localization, I assume. So all the evidence we have so far, along with the current confirmations, uh, state that so far we can expect to see Australia, probably possibly uh, New Zealand, Brazil and Italy as well. These account for four out of the six planned world updates for this year, South Korea would be a potential fifth one. That leaves the options completely open for a sixth world update. Absolutely uh, no idea at all on what that could be. Personally, I would like to see some updates for the African continent. There's a ton of amazing places in Africa, of course, and currently many of these do indeed look pretty good. But train updates, points of interest and improved cities are always very welcome. So the African content would certainly be my next choice. What though would be your choice? What would you like to see in a world update for this year? Do let me know in the comments section below. On another note, the 31st of January will also see the release of a new local legend, which will coincide with the release of the Australian update. The plane is the Fokker F7B, which has been developed by Orbex. You can see some screenshots on the screen right here. Moving into February, we will see the release of Sim Update 8. Microsoft have said that this will primarily focus on bug fixes, something which is much needed indeed at this point. No list just yet on specifics, however we can expect to see a vegetation render distance slider added, the approach flyback bug being fixed as well as some improvements regarding the lack of real-time traffic. Sim Update 8 will be releasing on the 22nd of February. March meanwhile will see the release of World Update 8, Currently, there's no further information on what we can expect to see in that particular update. Now, the latest dev update also talks about the new patch fix which was recently released. This aimed to fix a number of problems that were introduced with the previous sim update. The patch then it was required a 500 megabyte mandatory update from the store, as well as a 700 megabyte download from within the sim itself. The full patch notes can be seen on the screen right here, and are also linked below if you want to go and check them out. A few of the most notable fixes, however, included clouds at ground level, now showing as fog with the live weather. The hotbar has now been fixed for VR users, uh, they previously were unable to interact with this at all when in VR mode, so about time that's got fixed. Track IR support has also been fixed, there were some problems introduced with this back in Sim Update 7, and I know that was causing quite a few people 
to have various issues, so uh, that has apparently now been fixed. Another highlight with the patch was uh, blinking roads. These have also been fixed. Now, I never noticed any of those myself, but I've got to admit, blinking roads actually sounds pretty funny. Uh, possibly quite frustrating to see them, I suppose, when you're constantly seeing them, but one of those strange bugs. Now, moving on to news from elsewhere within the sim community. Third-party developers Aerosoft have finally revealed the release date and price for their upcoming new plane, the Twin Otter. This will be arriving on the 19th of January and will be priced at €30 Euros plus VAT. The Twin Otter is actually a very interesting plane, most notably due to its versatility. Various customization options allow for it to land in pretty much any location on land and sea. In short, this should be a fun plane to fly in a whole variety of different locations. Now, I'm going to be aiming to bring some video footage of the Twin Otter to you all early next week, as I'll be having the opportunity to test the plane out. I'll be able to then give you an overview and some first impressions of the plane, so do keep an eye out for that video. Meanwhile, you can find all details on the plane itself linked in the video description. That then brings us to an end of this video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.